Hey everyone, welcome back. So we're gonna be talking about wireframes. So we're really gonna get into designing very soon, but you know, we're done our sitemap, we're done user flows, you know, we've done a lot of sketching and you know, we have a good understanding of the content and the structure that is going into our product. So now I think wireframing is pretty much the next step. But the big question is, well, what is a wireframe? Now, you may have seen images like this when we were sketching and wireframe is a low fidelity layout that you know serves three simple purposes. It presents the information that will be displayed on the page in a little bit more detail than our sketches and our user flows. It gives an outline of structure and layout of the page and it conveys the overall direction and description of your user interface. It's basically, as you can see here, it's just like a blueprint of a building, but instead of a building, it describes the details clearly and specifically while giving everyone involved a good overview of the product. It's kind of like that middle ground between your sketches and higher fidelity designs and prototypes. They help you really plan layout, interaction patterns for your users without worrying about distracting details like colors or copy or, you know, typography, you know, all those things can really bog down your design process. Another thing to really know is that they are really heavily influenced from your prior work. So if you've done story mapping, you have user stories, if you've done things like user flows or site maps, I mean, all these different artifacts should really influence the way you create your wireframes. So just keep that in mind that you shouldn't just be like jumping in and creating a whole bunch of wireframes and not necessarily really understanding the type of content that needs to be there and the requirements that need to be there. So really consult all those artifacts that you have. And if you don't have them, you know, talk to the right people that can get you that information, whether that be product managers, client stakeholders, internal stakeholders, you know, use your voice if you need those requirements to even start. So why do we use them? Two big reasons. I like using them because they really help to test your concepts and your structure. So they really help you to understand how users will navigate your product. Sometimes you can use your wireframes to highlight certain areas that you think need to have prominence on a page to test if that piece of content is actually working and if the user flow makes sense. So this is one of the big reasons I use that so that it could be like user flows again, but in much more detail, understanding the different types of interactions and putting it into a wireframe makes it a little bit more easier to test with users to get, I guess, better results. The next best thing, actually, I think this is the number one thing actually, you need to use them to learn. You know, they are fast, cheap, and impermanent. Don't get attached to wireframes. They're meant to change as you gather more information through research and feedback from your clients and from your users. They're a great place to fail. And I don't mean that negatively. On a project, you want to fail as quickly as possible. And that means you want to test your assumptions as quick as possible before it gets to high fidelity designs or even development. You know, they serve as that common language for your team as well. They're complex enough to inform everyone, but simple enough to not get bogged down by too much detail. Now, the little kind of graph I have here is the build, measure, learn graph. And if anyone's read Lean Startup, I think uh, like you're, that's amazing because it's an amazing book. But if you haven't, you should definitely read Lean Startup. It talks a lot about building, measuring, and learning. So what that essentially means is you build, and that could be a wireframe, that could be a sketch, you measure it against something, what metric you're testing against. It could be like, I want to know if this interaction works. I want to know if users actually are interested in my product. You learn from those results and then you build again. So wireframes really help you to kind of implement that build, measure, learn cycle. So I want you always to think about that whenever you're kind of testing with users or just talking to other clients or stakeholders, you know, keep that in the back of your mind because the design process isn't linear. It's very iterative. So how can we use them? They're useful for three big reasons right now. You know, they help your team estimate the type of work they're going to complete. Clarity and common understanding across the team. They help your team understand what is going to be built. I mentioned this a little bit earlier. It gives them an opportunity to chime in as well if you're presenting to them and you should always be presenting to them even if it's just like ad hoc, you know, talk to your peer really quickly. Specs are kind of dated and wireframes can be really much more uh, collaborative than that. So get your team involved as much as possible. The next thing is user testing. We use them a lot for user testing. The sooner you test, the better. And that's the big thing. You know, like I said before, fail fast. 
So you can get quick feedback without necessarily developing complex prototypes with all those different types of visual things like typography, color, and all the different types of details like that. So testing with users really uncover like the different types of pain points and opportunities. So this is a little customer journey map. You know, if you've created one at this point, that's great as well, because it'll really help you understand how the user moves throughout your product and other products. So really document how your user can move through your wireframes, understand like what their pain points are. And usually there you'll understand that there are certain opportunities that you can really benefit from. And I also like to, I think this is kind of inevitable, but I really like to use these to, you know, demo to clients. It's a good way to get really quick feedback instead of like going all the way and sprinting towards like that beautiful design or that beautiful complex prototype. I mean, you got to remind them that it isn't the final design because, you know, you may have a client that is just like, uh, this has no color or this has uh, no like typographic elements. Like, what is this? It doesn't look good. And it's not necessarily meant to look good. So you need to explain that to them just so they can give you some quick feedback on certain things like interactions and, you know, flows and just placement and layout and hierarchy. Another thing about getting quick feedback is that, you know, making changes to high fidelity designs is like really time intensive and you don't want to be making bigger changes when you're nearly done the product. You want to be making those changes as you go along and the earlier, the better. So that's how we can use wireframes. We can definitely use them to like test. And I think like that is the biggest thing is testing early and testing often and not worrying about the details. So I'll teach you next how to create them.